Okay, so I'm here at the site and it is super cold. And there are butterfly sculptures all over the place.
this was not originally there. This was added after it was decommissioned and used as a, a grain car after the war. This car, this actual car was used to transport prisoners to their death. There's two displays. All the paper clips are housed in here and it, it is deep, very deep. It's a very long recording. I'm just going to play a little bit of it. The Children's Holocaust Memorial. Please be respectful of this car. No food, drink, or gun is allowed. We thank you for coming here. This project began in 1998. It is the subject of a documentary entitled Paper Clips, filmed and edited by the Johnson Group and the Green Virginia with production assistance from Matthew Hilsick. There's also a book, Six Million Paper Clips, written by Peter Schroeder and Dagmar Schroeder Hildebrand. We hope that the love, hard work, and lessons of clients demonstrated by the students, staff, and community of Whitwell Middle School will encourage you to return to your own community determined to make it a better place. Each of you has the amazing power of one that you can use to transform the world and send a message that hate will not be tolerated. Please use that power for good. We are grateful to Barris Lebovitz's family and friends and David Booker of B&B &B Crane for their generosity which funded the placement of the car on tracks donated by CSX Railroad. The decks and the landscaping surrounding the car were all donated by local individuals and local companies, with much of the work done by the Pickett, Higdon, and Roberts families, along with Steve Hudson. All of the lumber to build the decks and platforms were donated by Home Depot in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Once inside the car, you're going to notice all the paper clips that have been collected. Today, we have over 30 million. There are over 11 million paper clips in this car, representing all of the victims of the Holocaust, whose name, method of murder, place of burial, and date of extermination were meticulously recorded by the Nazis. Six million of these were Jewish, of which one and a half million were children under the age of 14. The other five million victims included righteous Gentiles, Jehovah's Witnesses, Gypsies, people with disabilities, and homosexuals. These paper clips have come from all seven continents. The paper clips you see are not on the platform. They cover an area approximately two feet deep, six feet back, and nine feet across. Paper clips were chosen to represent the victims of the Holocaust 
because a Norwegian Jew, Joseph Weiner, is credited with the invention of the paper clip. Norwegians wore them on their lapels as a symbol of resistance to the German occupiers during World War II. The paper clips we received, as you can see, are varied in form and color, just like the diversity of the Holocaust victims they represent. Paper clips from the United States are normally silver colored and rounded on both ends. However, European paper clips are generally pointed on one end, squared off on the other, and made of a copper alloy. We have paper clips ranging in size from a half an inch to over three feet in length. Every paper clip represents a life lost in the Holocaust. The paper clips have been accompanied by letters telling why the person sent the clip. The letters are housed in our artifacts room inside Whitman Middle School. We have over 30,000 of these letters and several thousand emails. They, along with the other artifacts, can be viewed by appointment. Information for scheduling of an appointment is on the back of the brown brochure which can be found in a box near the gate. We stopped counting paper clips when we reached 30 million. People always ask what was done with the paper clips that are not in the car. There are 11 million paper clips honoring the children who perished during the Holocaust in the sculpture on the north end of the car. We sent 6 million paper clips to a school in New Jersey that was conducting a Holocaust study project. The rest of the paper clips have been given out to students as they have toured our facility or put in teacher education boxes containing a history of the shuttle of Lido to Poland and a paper clip for each person exterminated in that shuttle. These were sent to schools that were studying the Holocaust. The train car was built in 1917 during World War II. The Nazis used this car to transport prisoners to camps. This, part was, this car was part of the German Reich. It is one of the last remaining cattle cars of the Nazi era. After the liberation of the camps, the car was left abandoned in Poland near the, near the town of Chelna. After the war, the car was used to transport grain. That is why the train, the train car has large holes in the roof. A German company bought the car in the 1970s. The car was located in a railroad museum in Robel, Germany. Research has shown as prisoners were taken back and forth to camps, they wrote wheels and stuck precious memento in the cracks in the side walls of the car. After the war was over, the cars were searched to remove any evidence. We would like to remind you that the holes you see in the ceiling were not there while the car was being used by, as a death car by the Nazis. These holes were put in after the war for use as a grain car. If you look closely at the ceiling a little farther north from the existing ceiling hole, you will see some newer wood where another ceiling hole used to be. Before the floor had to be replaced, there were also grain shoes in the floor. Peter Schroeder and Dagmar Schroeder Hildebrand, two White House correspondents for German newspapers, located this car. With financial help from their friends and German citizens, they purchased the car and donated it to Whitwell Middle School. They also made all arrangements to have the car transported to Whitman. As you look on the east wall near the right side of the door, you will see numbers, specifically 81 and 82B. This car was taken apart, literally piece by piece, and the numbers were like map keys telling how to put the car back together. This car was disinfected and cleared for customs by the German government, was pulled to the coastal port of Cuxhaven by the German rail company Deutsche Bahn and located onto a ship that the German government had leased to bring some items to a museum in the U.S. The car made its way to the U.S. on a Norwegian, on a Norwegian freighter, the MS Blue Sky.
The car arrived in the Port of Baltimore in September of 2001. Upon arrival, the car had to pass inspection from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. After it was cleared as pest-free by the USDA, CSX Railroad, an American company, placed the car on one of their flat brick flatbed trains and transported it to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Once in Chattanooga, the car was loaded on a flatbed truck donated by Fletcher, Com Fletcher Trucking Company and delivered to Whitwell Middle School. B&B Crane donated their services and equipment to lift the train off the track and place it on a memorial site. The cross ties, rock, and rails were donated by CSX. The inside of the car is 8 feet 9 inches wide, 25 feet 1 inch long, and 7 feet 6 inches high. It weighs without the clips about 10.3 tons. The clips weigh approximately 7.5 tons. A car like this would usually transport between 80 and 150 prisoners. Many times the prisoners on the transports were not given food or drink and were forced to travel in these cars in extreme temperatures for days and even weeks. The only sanitary measure the people in the car had was lime spread over the floor. Occasionally the car would pull onto a railroad siding to allow a troop train to pass. During those times, the Nazis would remove dead bodies and sometimes throw rotten vegetables or moldy bread to the people in the car. The suitcase on display came from an eighth grade class in Germany. This suitcase was abandoned in a bus station in Germany. Since the suitcase looked like a suitcase that might have been taken from prisoners entering the concentration camps, the class adopted the suitcase and used it as part of their Holocaust study. As the student visited camps to learn about the horrors of the Holocaust, they took the suitcase with them. At the end of this Holocaust study and this trip, the class wrote notes of apologies to Anne Frank. They are attached to the inside of the suitcase with paper clips. You will notice several other artifacts that have been left by visitors to the car. Some are in memory of survivors and liberators. Others are tribute to the work of the students, staff, and community who created and continue to maintain the Children's Holocaust Memorial. Please be sure to read the brief synopsis of the memorial on the south wall of the car and the quotations on the north wall. These quotations were chosen by the students to represent the meaning of their project. Take time to pause and reflect on the evils of intolerance and hatred. On the car's west wall is a poem, In This Car, written by Chattanooga's General Sessions Court Judge, Bob Moon. Leaving this car, take note of the following. The mezuzah on the right side of the door. This was given to us by Jewish community in Ohio. Note the numbers on the side of the car. Do you see the number 18? This is the tonnage capacity of the car. Beyond the sliding door is a sequence of numbers, 27153. These numbers, when added together, equal 18. Hebrew is a numeric language. 18 signifies high or life. When these two are added together, they equal 36, which is considered in Hebrew to represent double high and denote special blessings and good luck. It would seem these numbers symbolize that the Creator allowed us to have this car so it would become to the world a special symbol of life and hope. If you look closely at the rails that the car is sitting on, you will see that they say Tennessee 1943 and then have a number of hash marks beside the date. These represent the month in which the rails were manufactured. People at CSX Railroad wanted the rails to be from the same period as the Holocaust. The company searched all over their properties before finding the rails in an abandoned rail yard in Memphis, Tennessee. 
In the area surrounding the car, you will notice there are 18 stepping stones with stained glass butterflies. These were designed by Linda Pickett, a local artist. The stained glass was applied by Jackie Lofty, an artist from nearby South Pittsburgh. The stained glass butterflies are replicas of actual species that exist throughout the world. Again, we use the numeric symbols to, sem to emphasize the transformation of this car from a symbol of hate and intolerance to one of love and compassion. The butterfly in our Christian culture stands for rebirth and renewal. This car is no longer a death car. It has been reborn and now stands as a symbol of hope and tolerance. It is a Jewish tradition to leave a stone at a memorial site. This is also a tradition among some American Indian tribes. You will see stones of many kinds that visitors to the memorial have left. The monument at the south end of the car is a tribute to the children of the Holocaust, especially those of Terezin. Terezin was a ghetto camp where an estimated 15,000 children perished. The children in this camp, led by a dedicated teacher, produced an amazing collection of writing, artwork, essays, and poetry, which their teacher hid from the Nazis until after the war. When the children's artwork, essays, and poetry were re reproduced in a book called I Never Saw Another Butterfly, the book takes its title from a poem written by a young boy in the camp. We believe that the Creator ordained this Children's Holocaust Memorial. As the Yiddish word Bershev expresses so eloquently, eloquently, it was meant to be. As you leave this memorial, reflect on the courage of the people who endured the Holocaust, the horrors of the Holocaust, and all of the world's people who have endured the horrors of war and persecution. As you go about your daily life, use all of your powers to help and encourage the people in your community. Seek to find a simple act you can commit to make our world better. Exercise your amazing power of one to create a world where all men are not only created equal, but are treated as equals. A world where respect, love, and acceptance become the rule and not the exception. Become our partner as we seek to change the world one person at a time. We hope that your visit causes you to examine your actions toward others. Thank you for being here. If you have further questions, you may log on to www.whitwellmiddleschool.org. I made it. I didn't think I was going to be able to hold this camera in this cold that long. Okay.